Hey everyone, Waterbot here, and welcome to Tunic. Tunic is a action-adventure game in the same vein as, like, old-school Zelda games, mostly Link's Awakening and Link to the Past, and it's done in this, like, absolutely gorgeous, low-poly visual style with some really sweet shaders, honestly. It's such a lovely look, and I've been looking forward to this game since, like, 2017. It's been a while. Um, but it's finally out, and it's finally out in 1.0 on the Xbox, Xbox, uh, Xbox Series S, X, Xbox One, PC, Mac, and Games Pass. And uh, so, yeah, it's quite the spread. Uh, I'm playing it on Steam for this one, at the very least. Uh, but so it's going to be a little bit more challenging than maybe some of the old Zelda games that I referenced there. However, there are also uh, plenty of accessibility options that make it a lot easier. So if challenge is a little bit of a turnoff, then you can turn off the challenge, and that's nice. But one last thing before we dive in, thank you to Finji for sponsoring this video. Uh, they were kind enough to reach out, send me a copy, and sponsor this video. And then all the videos after this are just going to be kind of incidental because I actually really like this game. But with all that said, let's just dive right in. The fox gets that sword. It looks sweet. Yeah, it looks like the Moonlight Greatsword kind of. Uh, no, this is a little bit more crystalline. But yeah, I hope I hope we get it too. Anyway, if you guys haven't seen this game before, it is a uh, cute fox Zelda-like made by one person. It's been kind of coming soon for a very very long time, and I've been seriously looking forward to it. I played the demo like multiple years ago at a PAX, and thought it was adorable. Wanted to play more of it. Let's see, can I do anything with the mailbox? Yes, burp. Well, can't translate that. Uh, but yeah, I thought it was really cute. And like, I love the, uh, hey, we get a stick. Which I cannot translate that weird runic language. Stick, grab stick, put it over X, and left bumper. Perfect, so that's how we attack. Or manage our inventory, this is how we attack. We've got some money, it's great. Okay. So I can do a basic combo. And attacking doesn't seem to use my stamina at all, which is nice. Can't speak fox? I... What does the fox say? Please translate for me. I wish to know. So this actually looks pretty similar to the demo that I played a while back. Can I hop down here? No. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. But yeah, I played the demo for this at PAX, but then I also played it last year for one of the Steam Next Fests. And it looks like this is pretty much one for one what that demo was. But I get to go a lot further. We'll never know what the fox is saying. I actually would be like super chill with the idea of the game not telling me ever. Like what the fox language is and I just have to kind of make a do. And it's not like uh, you really need to know anything. But like I want to play one of those games someday. Ooh. Uh, I want to play a game someday where like there is, n like, you have to translate it for yourself. There's no convenient key, and the language itself is cryptic and messy. Uh, like, I'm thinking of the Star Fox dinosaur language, except for that was just, like, you just swapped letters and vowels around, so, like... Okay. So, uh, all you had to do is just kind of flip the letters around and you could just translate it for yourself. Plus, I think it was even in the manual, so it was, like, really easy to translate. There's one in the Myst series that you had to actually translate the number system for yourself. Yeah, kind of. I, I think I vaguely remember Shell talking about that. I don't remember too much about it, unfortunately. Oh, bigger fox shrine. Gosh, Star Fox Adventures was such a good game. I really wish I had actually bought it when I was a kid. It was one of those games that we rented and like I played an egregious amount of for a week. And okay, we now have a key of some variety. Oop. I'm gonna have to fight those giant pig warriors with a stick. Can I? No, I can't hit those. I don't think I can get past this either, so we'll just have to do other things. Uh, ba, 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 ba. But yeah, Star Fox Adventures was really neat. I wish they had done more like it. Honestly, just kind of in general. I, I, I don't know. I felt like Nintendo was always kind of allergic to the idea of a middling success. You know, if something wasn't up to their expectations, that was kind of loud. 
Uh, something wasn't up to their expectations. It like almost wasn't good enough for them, and I, I was kind of was disappointed by that because I, I actually found a lot of their like more middling products to be quite compelling. Uh, Star Fox Adventures is a decent example. Honestly, even Star Fox Command, like some polish would have made that game actually perfectly fine. Uh, I'm trying to think of other easy examples. I mean, I don't want to say anything from uh from the F-Zero series, though I never messed with that. I just feel like a, a modern F-Zero could be really interesting. <laughs> yes, that was loud. Playing Elden Ring, that scared me. Elden Ring is definitely one of those games where sudden loud noises are probably very much not okay. Why is, why is this so loud? I'll have to turn the sound effects down. I turned them down too, but... And gate is loud. I wonder if it's not tied to a sound effects slider. I, this happens sometimes when I play games. Uh, I turned the master volume down. Okay, we're gonna have to deal with this being weirdly quiet for like a little bit. Oh! Oh, like the this statue we saw earlier is just of this person. It's like of a fox god or something, but they're trapped. Yeah, so what some of these sound effects are not affected by the uh, the master volume slider. I notice this happens with certain games and developers where they, they don't actually uh, cover every sound effect under the slider system, and it's a little unfortunate, but it's fine. Could be like the mother? Yeah, maybe. Do we actually know... <laughs> it's an odd question to ask, but like, have they gendered the fox? kind of a pinkish bandana so it might actually be a like a girl I don't know not like it really fundamentally matters the gender here just mostly for using the correct pronouns okay so we had these dudes oh you can farm them for money the gender is fox I mean definitely according to <laughs> <laughs> Some people I knew back in the 2000s, that's the truth. Uh, let's see. How do we get up and around? Where are we going? Because there's no map yet. No, there's options. The share button doesn't work. Uh, maybe the other direction? Oh, we got the golden key for this area. There we go. volume might be a little loud for you guys oh I yep that's probably just still a little loud for you dudes there we go oh it's the manual I love this this like manual thing it's so good it looks exactly like the um uh, uh it looks exactly like the kind of thing you would have printed with like uh you know in the little user manual for like a Game Boy release or something Unfortunately, I still cannot translate the language. I, I'm sure if I sat down, I probably could. I'm curious how much of this uh, is like a direct one-for-one -one letter translation. Uh, so, Eastgate, Hero, Grave, Guard, Captain. So, kind of map. In a far-off land, a great treasure was sealed away forever. Some say it's the power to defy death. So, we can also see some basic uh, tutorial stuff. I love it. It's so cute. At least you can easily know what some of the words translate to, like the open on door. Yeah. Yeah, if I if I really wanted to sit down, I could probably translate it, uh, you know, bit by bit and probably wouldn't even take too long to actually puzzle out. I think my only immediate problem is that the characters are a little a little too squiggly for me to memorize. Uh oh gosh, what what is an example? 
Uh, any, did any of you guys ever read the Artemis Fowl books? Specifically the first one uh, had a long, lengthy kind of monologue from some dude written along the bottom of the book. And it was this, you know, just totally cryptic, uh, cryptic thing. I don't even remember if it was, like, particularly important to the overall story of the book. But I remember there was, like, one page where they had the, the letters spelled out and then translated. And so all it was was just, like, figuring out which letter corresponded with which character, and that was it. And so I remember as a kid realizing that, like, wait, I can just translate this one for one myself. And so I just sat down for an afternoon writing all of this stuff out just to, you know, see, like, hey, what are these letters? What does this mean? Um, damn it, I'm going to have to actually do this. Okay. Uh, do we? Hi. It's like I want to. Oh, wait, no. Yes? Hmm. Because I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out how specifically easy it would be to translate. Because we could start with stuff like door. Or open, maybe? Because the easiest way to do it would be to find a specifically, like, short thing. I don't need to translate it, oh, but the temptation is there. I, I think I'll, I'll hold off for the time being just because uh, it's going to take a little while, but oh, it is so tempting. Um, Because, yeah, I love doing stuff like that. I did the same thing... To some degree, trying to translate, uh, you know, the, the One Ring, because Tolkien had, had included stuff like uh, Dwarven runes in, uh, was it The Hobbit or is it Lord of the Rings? But there was definitely sections with, like, uh, Dwarven runes that you could, you could translate for yourself, but it took some effort. And so, whenever a game... Uh, Let's see, whenever a game gives me, like, a language that I could potentially decode myself, it's so tempting to, like, try and puzzle it out and figure it out and so on and so forth. East Bell Tower. I don't know. Let's just avoid those. Should probably lock onto things, but I don't really need to. Okay, health potion, sword. I think the easiest way to do it would be to try and uh, look at different words and effectively, so like sword, see if there's any matching uh, bits for anything else. I don't know. Uh, either way, I, I think I'm going to leave it for later. It's so tempting to do so. And I'm sure somebody else will do it uh, well before I ever get around to it. My problem is I am uh, I'm moving in a couple of days and just like... Time is a very, uh, very limited supply. Or, limited supply? It's a limited resource that I, I do not have much of. And that is uh, driving a lot of my decisions lately of just like, alright, so I want to... I got to record like this and this and this. And I've got to prep for this and this and this. I have to sit down and say like, that's just not going to happen, is it? And so that's my problem. It's like, I want to play through this. I'll probably this will probably be the thing that eats up for uh the next couple of days but i might <laughs> i might be very zombie like for uh at least a couple of the episodes where i'm just like i carried seven couches no, i only have two couches it'd be more like a gazillion boxes but is what it is somebody stole my weapon or whatever's in that chest God, I love how this looks. Like, it's all simple, low-poly stuff, but it's textured so incredibly well. Ow. Okay. It's fine. At some point, I'll get a healing potion. Ooh. They have a ranged attack. Okay. Fox got tired. There we go. I am very hurt, though. We might actually want to go back. It's 
too. I always was fascinated by the Atlantean language in Disney's Atlantis. Huh. You know, I had forgotten about that one. I don't think I was as tempted. Uh, I probably should have paid more attention when I was a kid because I, I loved doing it. I, lo I loved sitting down uh, to translate stuff. Like, it was a blast. But I think for the most part, I realized that, like, Most translations. Oh. That's okay. Now I know how to do this. So the roll is actually not that helpful. Okay, let's get rid of that guy. Alright, there we go. It's actually better to, uh, like, circle strafe is the better dodge, at least at the moment. For some other, uh, for some other fights we might want to switch around. Wait, did that spiky dude just murder one of the tadpoles? I think it did. Okay. There we go. It's good to roll after a combo. Okay, Hero's Grave. Well, yeah, let's go this way. Let's get our sword. Grab that. It's just playing this and I don't get it. Really? Alright, target lock, face your adversaries, focus and evade, focus and block, and a bunch more stuff to potentially translate. I love the fact that the tutorial is presented in the same manner as like an old school game manual. There's just some something incredibly neat about that. But I love it. But, uh, yeah, this is very much like an homage to my childhood. I never actually played Link to the Past, but I played an egregious amount of Link's Awakening. Like, that was, that was my game as a child. Uh, or my game. It was my brother's game, technically. Um... Okay, path to the hero's grave, so this is the right spot. Uh oh. Nope, got me. Ow! Ooh, my money! Oh! There's actually like a, an animation for getting downed. Huh. I'm terrified that this is going to be a Titan Soul situation just happened. Not great things. What do we got in here? No. I need the sword to actually get through it. Okay, so this is a little bit different from the demo. The demo let you go through a number of things much faster. This is taking you much slower. I like it though. Okay. Neat. Alright. So here's an idea. What if we just didn't? What if we just said, peace out, and didn't fight a dang thing? Okay. The, uh, this suddenly has become a not viable option. Or maybe... Maybe this became extra viable. Okay. Oh, is that his stamina? I think that is. Or something else. Either way, having him finish everything out for me was everything I needed to have happen. And more. Now, how do we get over to this? Do I? No, I can't scoot through. I think I messed up. 
Or no, I didn't. I can scoot around. Yeah, because there's no way I was going to be able to fight, like, four enemies at once. However, I can 100% fight one enemy that kills all the other enemies for me, which is great. Scroll back, scroll back through the VOD. The number of symbols in the coded language isn't matching up with the number of letters. Yeah, that's why I've kind of pulled back on the idea of translating it, because I'm, I'm sure you can, but I'm also sure that it's going to be a lot of work translating it. Sword! Okay. Stick. I don't really need the stick at this point, but still, lovely art style. It's so good! It's low poly with texture, but the, uh, the main difference, the key difference, is that it, it, uh, uses really, really, ex uh, like, tons of different shaders to make it, uh, look so much nicer. And so, like, you know, if this was shaded in the same way that, like, most low-poly games were, like, it would still be cute, but it wouldn't look that great. Uh, but by having all of these extra shader elements thrown in, it goes from this, like, you know, very simple low-poly style to something that actually, you know, holds its own as an actual, like, visual style. More than just kind of, uh... I don't want to say, like, a stylistic choice, but... I'm trying to think of a good example of... Or a good way to explain it. But effectively, like... There's a difference between pixel art and, like... A stylistic choice between pixel art and then using pixel art to kind of uplift your game. Uh, easiest example I can think of would be, like... Um... Okay. Sorry, a little spooky. Uh, but so there are like a lot of there are a lot of games that will just use pixel art because that's what's available. But there are very few games that truly uplift their game through the use of pixel art. Um, and so this is definitely one of those examples where the game is up uplifted through its use of low poly artwork instead, uh, which is actually really, uh, really satisfying as an art choice. I guess it's definitely something I'd like to talk about more in the future at some point. But I think that's better left for like a video essay rather than anything else. Okay, do these guys hit each other? It doesn't look like it. Either way, the sword is much, much better than the stick. There's totally going to be stick percent speed runs for this game though. You just know that's the case. Okay, so where does this go? Well, that door is locked, and there's some other stuff. I'll go the other direction. The shameless bonfire spammer in Dark Souls 2. Oh, me too. Uh, I don't actually know if I can go that direction. I... I'm okay at action RPGs, but I will take every opportunity I, I possibly can to... Uh, utilize whatever mechanics are available to me to make things better. I've been playing a lot of Elden Ring. Eh, I haven't actually been playing a whole lot of Elden Ring. I played like two nights worth of Elden Ring at, uh, that it, you know, the couple days after it came out and then I've just stopped because I know I can't beat it prior to, uh, prior to moving across the country so I figured I'd just wait. Um, can I just yeet this guy off a cliff? No. Damn. Let's see. Uh, what was I going to say? But so, playing Elden Ring, I uh, found out how to summon wolves and stuff. And I was just like, oh, hell yeah, I'm never doing a boss fight solo. And some part of me is just kind of like, yeah, but this isn't the way to play. This isn't the right way to do it. But so far, I've been pretty relentless on, on using them just because they make my life just that much better. 
It doesn't even help that much, but it distracts the boss just long enough. If it's in the game, it's meant to be used. <laughs> yeah, the right way is the way that makes you happiest. It's true. I just, uh... So, I agree with these mentalities, but having been a, a YouTuber and a streamer and uh, so on and so forth forever, are there any more signs? I must have cut it. Maybe? Oh, this one. Can I cut it? Yes! That's a really satisfying cut, too. Nice. Uh, but, 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 what was I going to say? But there are a lot of people that, like, will go weird purist. You know, summoning someone in Dark Souls is not the right way to play, and so on and so forth. Always, uh, gets my goat a little bit because I'm like, no, but it's in the game, and it doesn't matter. Um, but I, I notice I play very differently sometimes as a result of external opinions on, like, the way things are meant to be played. And then sometimes I'm just, like, staunchly like, I do not care. Nothing can change my opinion. So, like, I don't know. Mods. Every once in a while I get somebody that says, like, but mods are bad. We got a weird cracked shell. Oh, maybe that's half a potion container. Maybe. Oh, boy. Okay, we've got the guard captain. Ooh. Got him. <laughs> we are bleeding out at this point. Damn. That was close. I had a comment recently on a game. I was playing an idle game and uh, I had used Cheat Engine to speed the game up tremendously like 500 times hey we got a healing potion good time for it too oh boy it doesn't heal that much that's a problem it's not a huge problem but it's a problem uh let's see is there any way to get to the aha but uh bu 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 bu. i had used uh you use cheat engine to speed the game up dramatically so i wouldn't have to sit there for five hours waiting for something to happen in the game so my first episode wouldn't just be me waiting i've been playing some melvor idol and some other stuff and but that's a game that's a waiting game you just set it up and then you walk off and do other things for like two hours and you know i could maybe make that entertaining but like cripes it's hard and so i just figured i'd speed the game up and i had one person that was unreasonably mad at me for showing people how to ruin the game and now i've ruined the game for thousands of people and a bunch of other stuff and i'm just kind of like I don't know, I just made it fun for myself. All this other stuff just is kind of external expectations. Ring and strike. Oop. Ding. Oh. What does that do for me? Does it do anything? Or is it... It's like a heart container? I was hoping. Nope. I guess it's just there. Oh, does this correspond with one of the two, like, ringy thingies? Oh, there's a chest here. Sweet. Now, can I hop down? Oh, wait, yeah. I totally can. That's what this is. Beautiful. But, uh... One of the reasons why I bring this up, actually thinking about this game, is there's actually some really nice accessibility options. Like, I've turned off, uh... Strike flashes, uh... Screen shake and um, rumble on my controller. Just because I don't even, uh, I, I care not for any of those. But there's actually an option specifically to turn off the stamina requirements. Pick on sign! You're no bearing on me. Okay, we should probably go find a fox shrine as I am absolutely uh, terribly injured. However, instead, I'm out for blood. I don't think that one hit me. I hope it didn't. I'll make it work or I won't. Interesting that this... Did this do the opposite thing? That Link's Awakening did. Because if I remember right, Link's Awakening actually, you get the... Um, how the heck do I get to that? I don't... I don't see a way down. So maybe there's a way to jump or maybe something else. Come on, pick up the card. There we go. Oh, look at that map. 
Oh, it's so old Zelda. It's so good. I love it. So old house, sealed temple, mountain door, dark tomb, bell tower, west garden. Anything else? No, not really. Ring the west bell. Oh, it's so good. But, oh god. Every, every ounce of this is everything I, I've been hoping for to some degree. See if you can see a way to get down to the chest. Oh, how? I don't think it. I, I don't think it's something that I have access to at the moment. I'm assuming that either we need another item or uh, like a lever needs to be pulled or pressed. Because you see another chest down below, and I can't like jump or anything. Yeah. So whatever it is, I, I it's got to be for later. And if it's not, then we'll come back to it. I was hoping I could just, like, roll off edges, but that would be... That's hard to l design around. Shaking and vibrating controllers hurts your hands. I'm a weakling. There's only, like, a handful of games where I've ever been cool with rumble feature. Uh, because I didn't grow up with it. You know, the rumble pack was optional for the... Oh, right, I don't have a map. I mean, I do. Actually, the map ain't bad, either. So, we are currently... Oh! No, we can even see where we are on the map. Oh, that's so cute! With a little uh, orange fox symbol. Uh, can I get my mouse in here? No. Right below the sealed temple, that's where I currently am. Looks like there's a number of things, like that weird maw thing might actually be something we can go inside. Uh, well, I'm assuming the sealed temple is... Oh, I know where I'm going. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because, yeah, we wanted to go down to this section. But I'm, I'm going to quick check this, even though I'm pretty sure we've been here on the other side. Yeah, we have. Yeah, the world map rocks. Yeah! Like, I don't need every game to have a big map. Uh, I certainly do prefer good map systems that are, like, robust, that tell you where every single secret is, and where everything you've missed, and so on and so forth. But I can appreciate when a game kind of gives it to you, but m mostly for forces you to puzzle it out. And so in this case, yeah, having to... Uh, having to look at an old Game Boy style map and say like, okay, I'm here, I need to go here. Uh, and then, you know, realize that the map is incomplete. It doesn't show everything, potentially. Like that, that adds a certain level of intention and charm. Okay, that's too dark. But I'm thinking of, oh, what was it recently? Metroid Dread had a really robust map system. It could be a little vague at times, and it was definitely a bit of a tangle. Ooh, that's a bunch of dudes. But at the same time, every bit of information was expressed through the mapping system. You know, it was very difficult to get lost in that game. It was a little difficult to figure out where you were going, but it was very hard to... Okay. Turn Sword Boy around. Oh, interesting. I was hoping I could get him to kill the Crystalline Beasties. Now, can I charge the sword? No, doesn't look like it. Yeah, Hollow Knight's another good example. Uh, where, actually, I, I'd even say that that might even be kind of an interesting midpoint between many because the the actual map is kind of optional it's still there and you can use it but you can skip a lot of the mapping features you know you don't need to mark things because uh, it's something you have to buy which I actually almost kind of wish was uh, something else with this game right I was gonna talk about accessibility settings and why I was talking about like uh, you know player intent uh, one of the accessibility options actually turns off the stamina system in this which I think is actually kind of nice I think there's also, like, a no-failure mode, and I really respect that. Uh, I don't want to say the older I get, but the, the longer I do this, sometimes the more I, I just feel like, man, it would certainly be nice if I could just actually... Uh, yeah, no safety, low stability, hurt more. So if stamina is low. Moment of safety, damage taken 100%, block, stability. Interesting. Cool. Let's see, I wonder if you ever played Outward. I have, but it's been, like, four years? It's been a while. 
Actually, I want to play it again. And I'm hoping by moving back uh, close to my little brother, we can uh, go through Outward. Though I will admit, I'm going to be modding the heck out of Outward. I liked that game, but it involved a lot of like, boy, you took uh, one too many hits in that dungeon. Time to like suffer for a while or die. And admittedly, that game has like a very good system of, uh, I don't want to say like softening the punishment of death because effectively you can't die. There's no failure state. You just end up getting... I think I need something else for that one. Uh, there's no failure state in that game, so effectively... Uh, you just get kept kicked back to like a nearby dungeon or outside the cave or something, and it's really neat. But yeah, the HP and stamina burn was rough. And so I remember turning that stuff off. I know you could like drink potions and some other things to mitigate, but it wasn't really my jam. And like, yeah, sure, if you get good, it's not actually that punishing, but I... It, kind of my point with this is very much that I'm not interested in getting good or, or even mastering certain games at this point. I'm just kind of here to enjoy the novelty of it. And, you know, see the actual... Uh, the things that I perceive as the fun bits. Because for me, often, suffering is not actually the fun bit in a game. You know, overwhelming difficulty just makes me kind of tired. Um... And I'd, I'd much rather generally play games that are kind of light and fun, that just let you chill. Oh, those resonance forks are probably grappling hook points. Maybe. Maybe not. There's a lot of them. Okay. Oh, boy. There we go, got him. Okay, can I get in here? Yes, I can. It's very dark and the glare in my office is kind of bad. Hello, but maybe... We get a flower. Sweet. And a firecracker thing. And a little bit of money. Let's see, how are we doing? Decent. A lot of these shield guys. I was assuming, I'm, I'm assuming now that we're running into shield dudes, the game's kind of scaling up a little bit to introduce mechanics. Have the enemies tuto tutorialize it for you, kind of? There we go. Because by introducing an enemy type with effectively the new weapon, the shield, Oh, that's a dude with, like, spears and stuff. That is, like, the most adorable potion. Let's get rid of the, rid, rid of the ranged enemy. There we go. Boop. Okay. Love these curved staircases. I love all this architecture. I think uh, that will always be one of my my minor lasting disappointments with <laughs> humanity is that our architecture, ooh, that is incredibly sneaky. Look at that. If, if I hadn't been messing with the camera angle in that exact moment, I never would have noticed. Oh, man. All right. Uh, I was going to say. Nope. I don't know. I don't know where I'm at. Uh, introducing mechanics. You know, having shielded enemies means like, hey, maybe we'll be getting shields soon. Just as kind of like a... Ooh. Okay. I don't know if I can fight that thing. I think I need the shield. Which means I'm going to have to get past big in here. Ow. Goodbye. I don't think I can fight that at the moment. If I can. Oh, human architecture. Thank you. My brain was elsewhere. Where's the, where's the map? There it is. Uh, so I'm down here. Where's the nearest 
Fox Shrine. I don't know, but I think we might have access to the old house now. So I'm going to maybe head that direction. I think that... Oh, they're defending a golden key at their feet. I wonder if I can actually pull them off of it. Though my assumption is they're there to guard it very specifically. Oh, there's also the well here. Oh, no, the old house is, is locked. All right. It's fine. Because, yeah, I can just scoot through here and get to where I want to go. All right, and I think that's a pretty good stopping point, at least for now. Uh, obviously, there's so much to do, and I missed, like, a ton of secrets. I know. I was, uh, <laughs> the live chat was pointing out more than a couple, and I had to ignore them, but it was fine. It was fine, because we'll come back for them at a later date, especially once we have the hookshot or whatever. Whatever lets me deal with the tuning forks and a couple other things. I love this game. It's adorable. It plays really well. The music is great, and just across the board, it's a fantastic bite-sized little game. Actually, I don't think it's very bite-sized. A lot of people are saying like 12 to 20 hours, and that's that's actually a fair bit of stuff in this game. I love it. But before we go, one last thank you to Finji for sponsoring this video. It was very kind of them, uh, especially for a game I was really looking forward to, and also just for giving me the opportunity to play this. But beyond that, if you guys uh, like this video in any way, shape, or form, leave me a like. helps more than you know. And if you want to see more Tunic or Rad New Indie games every single day, then hit subscribe because I got tons of them to check out. I'm definitely going to put some more time into this one. Uh, it's going to be a little dicey because I'm moving, but at the same time, I'm going to try and put time in. I'd love to finish it, maybe. Either on my own or on camera. We'll see. But with all that said, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.